this is a message that uh, uh, it kind of came out of uh, frustration with sometimes the ignorance of uh, people that respond to things I put on YouTube. <laughs> so I feel like sometimes let me just respond to this ignorance. And this is what I'm going to respond to uh, because um, there was a guy that was, some, I don't guess he was on there. I don't, pay, I don't take a lot of what people say. You know, people could be sitting in their in they underwear, typing naked. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know who these people are. Well, don't, don't, you know, y'all be on there arguing with people. You don't know who these people are. Yo, I don't, I don't write people back. I just look at, okay, what you said, block you, delete you. Yo, I don't be going back and forth with people. I don't know who they are. They could, they could be some witch doctor sitting there ready to put a spell on me. Let me just cut in this transmission so that way I don't have no connection with you. Anyway, but this is where it came from. And a guy had wrote a comment. He said, you know, I, I, he said, he said, he said, this pastor here, he seems racist. That's what he said. He said he seems racist. He said, because, he said, why don't you just keep it on, uh, you know, Satanism and, and, and Satanism versus God instead of bringing race into it? Because what, race shouldn't be a part of um, the, um, it, it shouldn't be a part of the uh, 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 teaching or doctrine or understanding of the church. And that made me upset because I understand the ignorance of how people are parroting. They're parroting something that the school system and the way our textbooks taught us and the way even some of this liberalism has taught us to think. Uh, and so he really had no clue what racism was. He called me revealing truth about what people did. Racism. Now, how could it be racism when the people who did the bad things kept it out of the book? So how can we be racist? Because we uncovering what the racist made sure they didn't tell you. That's why y'all light-skinned. That's racist. The racist had sex with your grandmama, and that's why you light-skinned it. But did you read that in the book? No. No. There was no history on, on interracial uh, slave masters having sex with the slaves. But for some reason, we think we got the whole history. Turn this down a little bit. We think we got the whole history because we went to school. Some of us may be a little educated, which is really uh, kind of like an oxymoron now because you are educated to be ignorant. Because the real truth, you don't know. That's why the more educated a person gets, the more atheistic-minded they become. The more PhDs, the more they really don't have a, even Christian uh, PhDs, the more educated they get, the more they stop depending, the more they start depending more on psychology than they do on the word of God, the power of God, the gospel, the blood. Say, man, worship becomes a, you know, a cute thing, and there's no emotion, there's nothing because, uh, they have intellectually figured God out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, so this is why uh, folks that don't know nothing raise the dead. They don't, they're not educated out of faith. <laughs> Are you understand what I'm saying? So, uh, so anyway, when, when I read what this guy said, I said, okay, so we racist now, which is the title of this message. We racist now. <laughs> so we racist. I, I'm trying to figure it out. That now we have become... Racist. So I said, let me deal with this because um, this is going to be informational more than anything else. But uh, I feel like this is what we need to teach because our condition uh, as, as African Americans are a direct result of not understanding race. We don't realize that to other people, it really is all about race. We don't know it because we've been trained through, uh, through this uh, liberal uh, education system to not... To, we, we, we heard white people say, now I ain't against nobody white or nothing. I'm just telling you what my education, what miseducation was. We've heard them say that that's over. So why don't we move along? I say, okay, I believe that. I think we have more opportunities. We can, nobody can hold you back as far as if you want to achieve. I'm not talking about that. But when I began to go back and study, I said, wait a minute. How can so many things be left out? about who we were and what we were and how we got into this state and then you come along 400 years later and say why are y'all not doing good well when I go back and see what you left out how you uh, come on talk to me 
So we do need to deal with this. We do, and don't, and 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 if you really want to be honest, race is in the Bible. You don't remember when G, when when Paul uh, said, man, uh, when I think it was Paul that said, uh, I got it right here. I I read it because I know people. You know, they just they don't think this stuff's in the Bible. You know, because his brother must didn't read this. And uh, you know, uh, it, it was it was Paul when he saw to Timothy, and he said, um, he said. Uh, for there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, that even one of their own prophets said, these Cretans, that's a race. That, that Cretan described exactly who's Paul talking about. So there are some things, when you mention race, it describes what these people have done. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Paul saw it necessary to name the Cretans. If you really study it out, Jesus, saw, Jesus often said the Jews. That's a race. Did John eleven forty five? Then many of the Jews came to Mary. <laughs> you know the Bible talks about that uh, they, that Mary and Aaron got mad at Moses over his Ethiopian wife. That's race. The Bible's all about race. What do you think tribes were? Amen. They're races of people. And when one race subverts another race, their goal is to erase your history so you only know what their race has accomplished, which keeps you in servitude. Amen. So if I frame everything you have learned with we up here and you down there, then I'm going to have you a slave in your mind. Because in order for you to believe you can do, you must be able to go back and see you have done. So, it's that, so that's why they went over and said the Egyptians were white. Straight lines. They, they weren't light-skinned. They was dark-skinned people. Why do you think that the theologians who just so happened to be white wrote the books. Amen. We didn't write the books because darker races have an oral history. Amen. We pass it down through chiefs, Amen. tribes. Amen. We didn't write it down. We told uh, history from, they still do it in Africa. Venera, they do it all the time. But it was a European that came and started writing stuff down. And so you think stuff happened when they wrote it. Like Columbus discovered this America. When we know now it's been disproven because black people were here way before that. Not Indians. Africans. Africans already sailed the ocean. But we don't know. What would that do? Now why is that, what's that, is that important for you not to know that? Because in order to keep you down, I must make you think you always were down. I must erase your kings. Erase your dignity and your honor. I must erase all your accomplishments and make you think you were nothing but a feeder. I must erase the fact that you built the whole nation. The White House that, that, that made it white, you put the white on it. You are the original builder. You were the original the bricklayers. The, come on, y'all. The plumber. You were the artisans. And all slaves were not cotton pickers. Study the records, you'll find out that they went over and said, he's a carpenter. I want to sell him. He's a carpenter. Uh, he's, he is a, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, 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 he's a builder. He's a mason. These, they was skilled trades. That's why they were so in love with the African. Because we work for them. When they had to work, they started dying in the sun. Strong people. But even that was used against us. Our black skin is used against us as a weakness. When DNA and, and, and mitochondrial evidence shows that our black skin is the strongest skin you can have, the strongest makeup is a black man and a black woman. Y'all want to talk about it. I know y'all been conditioned. You conditioned against yourself. That's why these house Negroes will fight you. When you start trying to talk about your race and uplift your race, why we got to talk about race for, why, why don't we just worry about Jesus? That's what's wrong with us. We've been learning about Jesus and ain't been learning about who we are. Jesus tells you who you are. 
Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? So we got to understand our condition. Let me get into this. So race does matter. If it didn't matter, we wouldn't have over a million black men in jail. We know statistically white men have do drugs and are caught with drugs 80% of the time more than blacks, yet blacks go to jail more. That's not racist. See, you got to think, see, see these, these liberal lies that are thrown out there, they're based on you not researching. They're based on you receiving what somebody's telling you without you going to say, wait a minute, let me fact check what you say. And when you start fact checking, you realize, no, that ain't right. They just throw that stuff out there because they know they got to dumb down, they dumbed you down through education. They didn't teach you nothing. You, don't, you didn't learn cognitive reasoning, the ability to think for yourself. You think you're thinking for yourself, but you're thinking about what Lil Wayne said. You think you you using what Beyonce said. You not you don't have your own mind. You using what CNN said and what y'all want to talk. Let me get on. Look, true racists, true racists have the ability to hide or cover his racial deeds. So if we have the ability, there's nothing we can ever do. Uh, we are the most monitored, controlled, photographed spied upon race ever. There were laws passed before uh, the Jim Crow era that we could not congregate unless we were in church. Blacks could not even come together because they were so worried about us talking about really being free and rising up. We always have been monitored. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Let me give you another point. I was just writing some thoughts. Exposing the truth is not racism. It sounds racist because if you've only heard one side so long, you think that is the only side. You must realize white people will lie to too. They believe in whiteness and in, in, in superiority. They were taught that. They believe that Benjamin, um, that uh, Abraham, uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln truly freed us. They believe that. They don't, they don't, they, 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 they revise history. Abraham Lincoln hated black people. I got his quotes when he said a black man ain't no better than a monkey. But they lied and said he, he didn't free us. He didn't free us. What he really did, if you study what it was about, he said anybody who, any slave states who have slaves can keep their slaves. It was the new states that wanted slaves. They was talking about they didn't want it to go into the new states. He didn't free you. But now because revisionists, and they go into textbooks, and they revise it, and they come up with some story because they know we got a populace that won't study, so we don't know the truth. And most of this racism happened with the Bible. That's why we need to know about it. So let me go here. Nothing wrong with the Bible. It was wrong with they, they, inter they tried to use it wrong. The Bible says, uh, John 8, 32, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. Say all truth. All truth. No matter how hard that truth is, it'll set you free if you, if you, if you, if you uh, receive it. All truth has liberating power in it. That's why it means the truth will set you free. All truth has liberating power. Even a person, see, this is the reason why they had to condition uh, black people in slavery they had to condition you out of your culture and out of who you were. They breeded us out of the Africa. They made sure that they got the Africa out of us because they knew we kept running away and we kept fighting because we understood where we came from. So what the slave master did, he started having sex with the slaves, mixing his seed so he could make the slaves more docile over years. That's what Willie Lynch taught the slave master. To keep to make us docile so we would accept. So then you have a generation that has no connection to Africa, don't know they wasn't free always, and so they believe they was always supposed to be a slave. Therefore, they would just willingly. Did you ever thought why millions of slaves in the South yet they never rose up? It wasn't because they was it, it wasn't because they didn't have the numbers or the power, it's because they had conditioned them that this is who you are. Y'all got what I'm saying. So a person will eventually become liberated. Listen, truth breaks our mind prison. Truth breaks our mind prison. Are y'all there? And also, it breaks our mind prison and it breaks the boundaries of cognitive thought. Cognitive thought is what we never learned in school. We got knowledge, but not wisdom. Cognitive thought has to do with wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. That means you can have a lot of head knowledge and don't know how to apply what you know. Wisdom is a 
thinking is a reasoning where a person has the ability to look at something with discerning attitude, not just seeing it for surface value, but having the ability to take it in and, 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 and marinate. Amen. Not seeing what everybody else sees, because most people are trained only to see the surface. That's why you think everything you see is real. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That's why people think these rappers run around with these Benzes and Bentleys on these. They don't own this stuff. It's not real. But we don't know no better. Let me, let me keep going. Look. 2 Corinthians, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me, let me start with this. Let me hurry up because I don't want to get too long today and not be so long that y'all, that y'all zone out. Did you know that zoning out is part of how you've been conditioned? Amen. We as a people have been conditioned not to sit and learn. We've been conditioned. We have to have emotion and music and drums and stuff got to be totally moving. That's why our movies have to be action-packed and or some drama. We got to have some Jerry Springer or some Maury stuff going on. That's the only way we can receive now. We need stimulants to receive. But to sit there and sit there and hear a lecture or be intellectual without no lights flashing, without, we just can't get it. Our mind just, just we, 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 can, we, we go on off. We've been trained not to receive that way. When if you study who we were in the turn of the century, we were the intellectuals. We were the intellectuals. Our black Congress wrote so much stuff that white men couldn't even decipher the level of intellectualism that we had. So what did they do? They passed a law that no black man could be a congressman. But you don't know we were congressmen before. So, so when you watch these Hollywood movies, which is, only, which is only liberal revisionism, which means it's just teaching you what they want you to think about history, they leave out this stuff who we were. Make you think 12 years a slave. Why they keep coming out with this Django? Unche- Why they, they putting this slave stuff back in the mind of you black people? All we seeing is the action packed and the no this the the, the, uh, the butler. Three top movies, slave movies, servant movies, and we getting used to these roles because this is how the the liberal really think about you. Both sides. Stop at Republican Democrat. They the same. They the same. There were slaves in the North where the Republicans was, just like it was in the South. The only reason that the North stopped slavery was because the North didn't have the land mass. Like the South has mass of plantation. You know, South is flat, got all that land. To, and plus the South had the, the, the weather with the sun that stuff grow better. That's the only reason there was more slaves in the South. Up north, the slaves were more carpenters and electricians. They, they had to have a trade, boat builders. They had to be something skilled because up north, there wasn't no plantation like it was in the south. But it, the, the, the north wasn't for us. We don't study that out. But don't we always think that they're running to freedom? Why did, did, why did they run to Canada? They didn't run to New York. They didn't run to uh, Detroit. They ran to Canada. Why? Because up in the north, they were still racist too. The Underground Railroad was to Canada, if you don't know. They make you think they got out of the South, crossed the Mississippi, and now they free. No, they had to get out of the America. Because there was white, there was, there was same mentality in the North, that the North even started slave patrols capturing black people who had been freed, taking them back to the South for money. We were a product, we were a crop, we were a harvest in this nation. And then once we, and, and the only way they did it was because they had to write in the Constitution, Thomas Jefferson, who y'all say Christian people, all these Christian forefathers, they said we was three-fifths human. That means you're not all the way human. Right? So that means I can treat you that way because you're not all the way human. That's how they got away with it. Once they begin to understand that uh, we weren't going to, eventually slavery was going to tear this country apart, because they, they killed their own brother to keep you a slave. That's what the Civil War was. They killed each other. They killed their own people because they wanted you in chains so bad that they was willing to kill their own family. And that's what Civil War was, brother against brother. But that's how powerful that slavery was. And in, in our history books, it's a chapter. It's a chapter, maybe. And there's never any real truth and that's why in history, we always scratch our head like, okay, well, how did we get here to here? How, how did it? It's disinformation. It's just enough information to make you think you know something without, so you won't go study it. Y'all don't want to talk about this. 
how can we not talk about race when the slave masters use the Bible to say that we would we would we have the curse of Ham upon us, which means we are servants. That's that's where that's how they got that's where they got it from. Why what do you mean don't talk about race? We would have never accepted slavery unless they unless, unless these preachers, these white preachers was teaching that, that in the Catholic Church too. That we were had the curse of ham on us, and we know ham was where we get the Ethiopians, the black race, supposedly comes from ham, which is not true, because Shem has dark race people too. No, no other son, Shem has dark, y'all don't want to get too deep into that. But ham, so that's why they said that this curse of ham is upon us, and that is the reason why we were, because when Noah, when, when ham uncovered Noah, when Noah was in the tent, tent drunk, ham went in and uncovered Noah's nakedness, the Bible said Noah woke up out of drunken stupor and cursed Cain and Ham's son. And out of Canaan came put or, and, and Miserim and all of these Ethiopians and dark-skinned races. So they said because the curse that Noah placed on Ham, on Canaan, was that you would be uh, always a servant, like you always be serving your brother. So they took that right there and said the whole black race <laughs> is supposed to be servants. And because we, didn't, because we didn't have written down history, we only had oral history, they told us that was the reason why we should accept slavery. Like that was our lot in life. Now you must understand it sounds strange in America, but in Europe that's how they always live, in classism. In Europe it was always that way. If, you, if your daddy was a butler, you a butler. You ain't gonna move no high in a butler. If your, da if you, if your, family, if your, if your daddy's a peasant, you a peasant. You can't move up. Ain't no getting up. You gonna stay on the class. They had classism. If you were royalty, you stayed royalty. But see, in America, we don't understand that system, but that's the European system that came here that told us y'all were meant to be slaves, so they conditioned us more and more to receive it through thinking that the God that we serve, which they just so happen to paint white, <laughs> then when you just do a little scratch in the service, you realize the Jesus that y'all see with the long hair and the blue eyes is really Leonardo's, is Leonardo's da Vinci's gay lover. He was the Pope's son, Caesar Borgia. Just look it up. Which is really modeled after the HBO series Borgias. That's where he was a gay son of the Pope Alexander. And that's who painted Leonardo, this gay dude. They was lovers, painted his lover and said he's the son of God because they believe the Pope is God. So he's a son of. So we adopted that as this is Jesus. So here they are on the good times wall saying... I don't know no other Jesus but this one. And, and Michael tried to tell him, Jesus wasn't that color, mama. Jesus was... This is the Jesus I know. You think that wasn't conditioning us? You think they didn't condition us with that? Talking about don't talk about race. It's all about race. And how many of us sat there and heard us say that? And we agree, well, yeah, that's, yeah. Everybody got the big black Bible with the cover of Jesus. We had one, big cover of Jesus. I thought that was who he was. When I got saved, when I closed my eyes, I had to, I pictured that Jesus. I didn't know until I started to study that that's not what he looked like. Say amen. Let me get on. But we don't study this out. But because we find it out, we the racist now. See, if, have you noticed, like if you go on YouTube and you look at comments and you start seeing stuff where, where people are starting to reveal truth about this, the lies that we were told, then all of a sudden you see people writing like, why are we even talking about this? Why don't we just get along now? You know, God love everybody. Why didn't God love everybody when y'all was on top? Why didn't God love, why, God didn't love us when we was in chains? Now because we find we waking up, see, we're starting to research the word and search and we know the scriptures now and we and we starting to get books that we didn't have access to through the internet and we can research and study and now we're finding out that, oh, it ain't like y'all said. Now what are they saying? Let's all just... Yeah. See, people want to get along when you start uncovering their stuff. Then you start hearing stuff like, what, what different does it matter what color he was? That's what white people are saying. Now, what did... Well, why did you paint in white? If it didn't matter, somebody thought it mattered to get that image that God looks like this. The God we pray to looks like our oppressor. 
You think that's not psychological conditioning? Why you think so many brothers went to Allah? Because that line right there made them think, ain't no white man going to treat us this bad going to be our God. But if they would have had the truth, they would have knew this Bible ain't about a white God. White don't even come into the picture in the Bible. We think, the, we think the Bible has to do with white people because we talking about the Jews, so-called Jews who now live in Israel. But when we study out who those Jews were, we know they were they're the European Khazars that come out of the mountains of, 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 of the Caucasus Mountains. They're not Hebrews. They adopted Judaism and called themselves the Jews. That's why Revelation says those who, those who call themselves Jews but are of the synagogue of Satan. So because we don't know that, we think it, the features of them is what Jesus, that's why if you ask what Jesus looked like, oh, he was a Jew. He wasn't a Jew. Jew is a new word. It's not a biblical word. They got that from the word Judah. The Bible may say Jews, but Jews wasn't in the original text. They used it to keep in your mind that Jesus is white. That's a psychological power for you. Black people mind can't take that. Because we've been, listen y'all, listen I got, oh, I can't got so many places to go with this. We are conditioned to protect white people. I'm not, I don't even get white people. Listen y'all, see that's why I say it. Even if preach talk this way, I sound racist. But I'm, not, I'm just trying to tell our people. What's happened to us? If, and then we can learn about their history all year. And we get the smallest month to learn, which now is reduced down to a bunch of Martin Luther King sound bites. They never play the whole I have a dream speech. Because if they play the whole thing, they would know he's calling out these white people. He's calling out a hypocritical nation. That calls itself a Christian yet oppresses the very people who have built it. But they stop at little black boys and little white girls. That's the only part of that speech you know. That I have a dream part. But you don't know the part when he was talking about if that, 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 that this nation, if it doesn't turn, it's going to suffer, which we living in that now. Prophetic words. It was prophetic, what he said. But we didn't turn. They covered it up. They covered it up and, 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 produced a, a, and produced programs of social management to manage you instead of telling you the truth. They apologized to the Japanese what they did to them in World War II. They compensated them with reparations. They, they, they apologized to the Indians, gave them reservation land, and now the Indians ain't got to pay taxes. They can have free casinos. You know, they did. It's foolishness, but it's something. They compensated every group that was wrong. Even the Jews in Germany are getting, got, get, got compensated for the World War II. But black people, we, we, it's so bad now because we have been conditioned to talk about ourselves and put ourselves down. Our own people say we don't need reparations. That's why Dave Chappelle quit the show. He knew what they was trying to do, making fun of it instead of saying, no, this is real. They want to make it fun, like all we going to do is go out and blow our money. No, it don't matter if we blow our money. It's our money. Amen. Why you worry about what I do with my money? Amen. If I want to go buy a, 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 a truck of cigarettes, that's my money. <laughs> let me buy what I want to buy. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Let's go. Let me, let me get done. Look, man, there's so many places to go with this. 2 Corinthians 10.3, this is our problem. This is where we are. This is, this is why it's so important that we deal with race. Are y'all there? And, and, and listen to me. I told y'all, I ain't got no problem with white folks except that if they don't tell the truth. But the same problem I got with them, I got with black people. If you don't tell the truth, I'm, me and you got a problem. It ain't, it ain't about color. It's about do you tell the truth. Because black people can lie too. The problem is, is, is blacks didn't write these books. You wrote these books. Somebody purposely left out the, the history, the kings, the, the black queens of Africa. Somebody left that out on purpose. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10. This is why I'm talking about this. For, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Oh, verse 3, 10 and 3. 2 Corinthians 10 and 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. 
So how do we fight? So we ain't fighting flesh and blood, right? We ain't fighting white skin, black skin. We're dealing with strongholds. Our warfare is a spirit, is spiritual, and it's about strongholds. Y'all got that? Now, a stronghold is a well-fortified fortress, a place that serves as a center of a faction or of any group sharing certain opinions and attitudes. Okay, y'all got that, right? So the fight is against the mindsets that have been formed by faulty information or lies. So we're fighting the strongholds, the way people think based upon the lies that the education system taught them. So the same lies we were taught, white people were taught them too. That's why they think they are superior. When all scientific evidence says they have a recessive gene. Pretty eyes, believe it or not, is a weakness. Light skin is a weakness. It's a mutation, it's a defective gene. They know it. Why do you think they don't talk about it? You, all you got to do is just look at who can go in the sun. It's, it's, it's defective. That white skin is defective. It's a weakness. We know their bones are weaker. Now, that sounds like I'm being racist. Oh, boy. But that just really sounds, if you really understand, that's just truth you've never heard. Why is that racist? Because I'm telling you the truth. They know if they go out there, they get cancer. They, they understand. Why do you think they had to get us to come work the hot sun fields? Because the sun gives us more and more strength. Now, I'm not talking in a way. Ain't nothing spiritual about that. Don't go into that foolishness. But the sun is healing. It does have healing properties. But what I mean is it just makes us darker. That's all it does because of, because of that melanin that we have. And, 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 the, and they messed up the image of beauty to tell us that our crunchy hair wasn't beautiful. But when you study, but, but if you understand hair, you would know the reason why your hair snapped back because it's strong. Your hair is strong. Go to the dentist. Dentist will tell you black people got some of the hardest bones they are. They hate to pull your teeth. Your bones are strong. Y'all don't want to talk about this. But you learned that everything, because of this evil mindset, you learned that everything about you was inferior or weak, including your woman's looks. So we got our women with plastic hair in their head like over they doing over, over in, in Africa now. Go to Africa. I was in Nigeria. I told you, I couldn't believe. Wait a minute. I said, now nah, I'm expecting to see. The, the, if I'm going to see natural, I should see natural hair. <laughs> Everybody walk down the hair with the hair. So why they got this natural? Where am I at? But they were taught the same lies you were taught. That black hair is not beautiful. Black skin is something else, so they dye in their skin. They, they taking lightning pills and stuff, like Beyonce. Because they've been taught, that's why Kelly Rowland always run around crying. I'm, I'm just, I, can't get on my, I can't get up like Beyonce. You know why? Because she's darker. They won't like women. The music industry is ran by light, close to white. Look at Nicki Minaj, close to, you can't even tell these people no more. Are they white or black? Y'all heard what I said. So... When I went there, I said, you know, look at the sisters over here. And, I, and it, it made me realize that even over here in deep, dark Africa, they don't understand their beauty. They think the European style of death, this is what runway models are. They look like death. That gothic, bony, no butt, no body, no nothing. <laughs> Face sunk in like a skeleton. With their hair just all draped down like a skeleton, straight like a skeleton. Amen. It's that style. Amen. We are not those kind of people. Amen. Yet we're, we, we model ourselves after that. So black women don't like their bodies and they don't like their sides. They don't like the fact that they don't like their butt. They don't like what some do. They might like it too much. But they don't like everything God has given them. So now we got sisters mad at other sisters because they perm. And then we got them over here because they head napping. And we can't even. <laughs> we got a faction amongst black. Well, I thought y'all were sisters. No, I'm, I'm with the girls who are natural. <laughs> That's just a faction that was started by the European to keep you divided. 
That's why the only ones that can get on and get on TV, the real ones, the, there's got to be them Bobby dolls. The ones that just, the ones that represent the blackness. Get hard when there comes an ethnic issue. Bring out Sister Soldier when it comes to I heard she nappy with the camera. This. And we sitting there thanking the girls. Now listen, now listen. If your hair looked like that girl that did that interview about, uh, the, 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 she was a juror, and that did the interview about the boy, the, the man that killed the black boy, if your hair looked like her, don't get on TV. Because I understand her. It, I know we crunchy, but come on, man. We can, we can you know, that, you, can, you can work. You can do some things when you ain't got to just walk around just, you know, like Dragon Ball Z. You ain't got to just do that. It, it could be, we can work with it. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Now, y'all know we had froze. They was round. Round and straight. Picked out, blew out. Black people walk around, fro, fro blowing. What happened to us? What happened to a James Brown now? Come permanent and putting that, laying it down. Because they even said that why they did that, all them singers said they did it because they had to look more white. The white people would not buy their records if they was too ethnic. White people wanted something that looked close to them. So they her had to be like white boys. That's why they was turning their hair out. The fro didn't play well. Y'all, y'all. So what we're fighting, strong, say strongholds. strongholds. That means mind conditioning. Amen. We have been conditioned to think a certain way. So we are fighting, so, so but whether you believe it or not, you know, I was in the airport uh, yesterday coming back home, me and my wife, and uh, um, I was, I, 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 I missed it, I blew it, I blew it yesterday. I, 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 but it was it was old, old guy, he was supposed to be helping me, uh, we were supposed to be getting our tickets for the flight. And as I went up to the desk, I was, you know, at, you know, I was, we was kind of in a rush, and uh, it was already messed up because they had booked our flight on two different airlines, which is really weird. I'm a gold member. I should be able to, you know, should be above that. But when I walked up to him, I saw that he saw me coming. And I noticed because of this conditioning, listen to me, Chloe, please hear what I'm saying. We have been conditioned to think a certain way about ourselves than we do about white people. That's part of the conditioning. Uh, yeah, let, let, let me explain. Black men would have been lynched if they didn't constantly, that's, that's how they stayed alive. They had to kowtow and shine and dance and do all that because that's how they stayed alive. That's still part of us. That when it comes to white people, we have a tendency to want them to feel at ease. That we go out our way to smile and we go out our way to be kind and we go out our way to, and it's nothing wrong with doing it, but we go out of our way. Amen. But when it comes to our own people, our mindset changes. And, it's, and when, when, when they come up, what, 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 you've been conditioned to think that way. Now, now, it's, now, they will call it racism if you treat your own people good. That's why all of our entertainers can only get paid if they leave and stay away from their people. All the millionaires we got, you can't name two or three that's truly impacting black folk. You know why? Because they don't pay them to bring up their race. They pay them to be their entertainment. So when you get your millions, you got to move out to Hollywood. You got to get away from the people, your people. You got to go out here where they are, and you got to keep your, con your charity work quiet. Are y'all there? So anyway, the brother's coming, and I just said, man, this ain't the day for, this ain't the day for me to get grady today. So I go up, I... I say, you know, will you help me? Now, what his, now, now, his problem, immediately he thought I was ignorant. Immediately he thought I had never flown on a plane. And I said, man, I got 60,000 miles, frequent flyer miles. I've been to Africa more than anybody y'all know. <laughs> been all over the place. We've been to Dubai, we've been everywhere. But because I walked up, just me, as a black man, 
he immediately assumed I was ignorant, that I didn't know how to get on the screen and put the information in and get when this is what I do. This is what I do when I fly. But what the problem was I was in a rush. So I said, you know, okay, would you come around? You know, I didn't even ask him to come around from the counter. I was just asking him, are you going, I was trying to ask him, are you going to do it back there on your screen or am I going to do it on my screen? Well, he comes around and he punches buttons, show me, he thinks he's showing me how to do something. I said, okay. So I said, well, I didn't get a chance to change my seating. You know, I, I didn't want to sit where we were sitting on the plane. I said, I want to get that screen up again. I said, do you do it back there or can you do it here? So he immediately think, you know, you know how we get, you know, you know, so, so he asked my wife, as we get the seating chart, he asked my wife, what seat? I mean, he asked my wife how old she was. So I said, what? I said, what's that got to do with what I'm asking you? I knew what he was asking it for. I knew what he think he was asking it for because in, in, the, in, the, in the luxury emergency row seats, uh, you can't be under a certain age. You can't be under 18 to sit there, right? But I'm sitting here with a wedding band on and my beard was thick with gray hair popping in it. But, but, then, but then it dawned on me. I said, this, this, this guy, he is trying to secretly make, me, make it look like I don't know what I'm talking about. So I told him, dude, what do my wife got to do with I said, she's old enough. So he said, well, I don't, I ain't, I'm not going to help you then. I said, well, go on then. <laughs> go on. I said, man, I got this. I said, what you do? So then I went, you know, so he, so he went on, so he went on back around the counter and he said something. I said, man, shut up. <laughs> I said, man, I ain't no punk. Shut up. <laughs> and he looked at me like, what? He looked at me like, like what? I said, well, okay, do something then. You know you ain't gonna do nothing. You need this job too bad to do something. Do something. I said, do something. And you know how people are listening to stuff and all that. And, and, and it dawned, I said, it dawned on me. I said, they not used to black men ever rising up. Now, white women, black women, y'all know y'all do it. They used to, y'all Y'all got a bad rap with this. They know y'all, they, they, you would have been, they know you'd have did it. But a black man, he, now see, now see, he's conditioned. He addressed my wife because in our community, the man ain't got no power. So he had to address my wife because he knows that in the black community, the woman got the power because we all, our homes are messed up. He didn't know that I'm, dude, uh -uh, I'm a man of God. If you address me, my wife is standing there letting me take care of her like I do. But he tried to sidestep me like I ain't nothing and talk to my wife, which made me say, what you want to talk to my wife for anyway? She didn't ask you nothing. So then, you know, the people, there's people around, get to listening. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, I know people try to say, well, you know, oh, man, well, you a preacher, you shouldn't. I don't feel that way. I feel like more black, it was another black brother that came over that took my bag. I could tell he didn't like that guy. He worked with him. <laughs> because I know that they are so not used to us standing up as men. I told my wife, I said, baby, this is how, that's how men, that's how we, that's how men used to be. I said, when a man say something, this is why men don't get into it. If a man get into it, he know if we really go here, we go, man, look, man, we one, we. we, we. That's, why, that, that's why men don't get into it, because we understand. There's an escalation point. When you say what, and I say what, that's escalation. <laughs> the next thing is going to be what, 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 what. But as, you know, and, and so, and, 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 and immediately, some in my mind, you know, I, you know some I started thinking, like, oh, you, oh, you know, you, you know, you know, you're a pastor, you know, you can't do that. And then I heard something deep say, wait a minute, you a man, you ain't do nothing wrong. These people in here need to know black men are not punk, we're not weak. And when we handle something, it may sound, it sounds, it sounds, see, it sounds scary to them. Because they ain't used to hearing a black man say something. That's why they want black men to go to school now and be the monitors and the security. Because kids listen to black men. 
Now, they don't want the black man in the house or to whoop the boy, but bring him to school and, and take a bullet. Jump in front of the teacher and save her. But don't whoop him at home. <laughs> don't, don't live with the woman either. So I, so, so, as I, as I, and, and so this one brother, he came over to take my bag. He gave me a little, you know, like a little nod, like, I'm like, you know. And I said, and, 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 I, and I said, you know what? I said, now, if I ever go back through the Chicago airport to the United, which I don't fly to him. I'm a Delta person, but I still said I'm going to go through United. I said, if I ever go back there, watch how he treat me. I guarantee you he going to take care of me. He going to talk to me right. I was on a flight coming back from, uh, from, uh, I think I was coming back from uh, Nigeria, maybe in, it was, it was Nigeria, no, it was South, uh, yeah, it was Nigeria. And, you know, you know, that Nigerian flight is a ghetto flight. It's not the plane, it's the, it's the, it's the, um, the, the stewards, the flight attendants, because they feel like, you know, Africans, it's all Africans on the plane. And these, these, these black attendants, boy, they be talking crazy. Because they don't, it's like, it's like the flight nobody want to be on because <laughs> you're going to Africa, and you know Africans are really real. Africans are very, um, you know, they 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 kind of cautious a little bit. They don't have a, they don't have a consideration. They they weren't taught pleasantries, like please and so they don't do that and talk that. So when they talk, you think they are getting smart with you? you gotta hold up. What, what, so you gotta. That's why I say you gotta check your Western mind when you go there because you think they ain't really getting smart. That's just how they talk. I said sit here. I said, what, man, who you talking, man? You don't talk to me like that. You know how we get. Our boys go up high. You know, uh, you know that's, 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 Af that's only African-American, though. Our boys go up high. We get this confused look on our face. Who you think you're talking to, man? You don't be talking to me. <laughs> one, 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 one of the most powerful things me and my wife saw, we was in Brussels. We was coming back from, uh, we was coming back from Uganda. We, was, went to, we had to go to Brussels first. And there was a black dude. Everybody was in the line going to the ticket counter trying to get their tickets and they, they had really made a mess of it. People were confused and nobody understood what was going on. And the black African, now he must have been from Kenya, you know, he might, no, I don't think he probably, he sounded like he might have been from Nigeria because that's how Nigerians, they kind of strong like that. So he went up to the, so they kept sending him through changes. And he, and it was a white man that was telling him, uh, uh, kept telling him the wrong thing. So the guy that stood there, man, he just got mad. And the white guy kept trying to tell him something. He said, don't you talk to me again. <laughs> I mean, the whole airport. I mean, everybody just stopped. Like, I mean, it was, it, I, mean, I mean, white people were scared. Like, because, I mean, it was a deep, like, don't you talk to me again. He will not be the one that deals with me. It was, <laughs> you know what they did? Sir, come, okay, sir, come, we'll take care of you over here. But he just did it as an African. I said, but African Americans, we've been black men have been trained. Don't don't do that. Don't you don't you say that because they punish us for aggression. They punishing our little boys for being little boys. A little boy doing what kids do in Africa. When I was in Africa, kids play all day long. They just run around and play and play and have a good time. And they don't sit still. They just run around. Over here it's called ADAD, but over there they's just being children. They playing. But they punishing our boys and putting them on medicine because of the, because of what they consider to be aggression. When it's just what black how black people are. Oh. Can y'all handle what I'm trying to tell y'all? Lord, let me get on. I ain't got time to finish this. Let me get on. Okay, so we talking about strongholds, amen. Stronghold. Okay. So let me give you a couple of things, a little bit of information. I don't have time to give you, I'm just going to give you some of the lies and then I'm going I'm to be done with it. Okay, let me, let, let me give you, um, let me give you, uh, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with 10 lies. Say 10 lies. 10 lies. Okay, this is 10 lies. This is why race is important, y'all. 10 lies that shape, say shaped. Shape. See, it shaped the mindset of you and it shaped the mindset of white people. And this is the reason why when other ethnic groups come here, they start trying to act like white people to us. You ain't never seen it? They pick up, why? Because they go to school and get the same history and teaching. And so they start looking at history. See, even, see let, they think about what I'm saying. They, these people come here neutral. They don't know black or white. But once they start going to our schools, just by reading our books, they come up with a conclusion. 
y'all, these don't identify with them. And so Asians are acting white. Come on, the Jews are acting white. Come on, listen, think about what I'm saying. Mexicans. You do not see Mexicans live in the projects. You've never seen a Mexican in a project. He don't, don't live there. You might see one. That's Felipe. <laughs> Felipe got black woman and he just, we all had a Felipe or Paco. They live there because he got the black woman and she got him. <laughs> but you ain't seen no whole clan of Mexicans in the, in the projects. They don't believe that. They come here and automatically live out, in, out there. Nobody fights them moving in. There's no fight with Mexicans and white folk. The fight has always been covering up the atrocities of these people. So we really, so really, what black people, if I can sum us up, America has, has, has turned us into the flowers in the attic. Well, what a good word. You know the movie, The Flowers in the Attic. That is what America wants to do with us now. Forgotten. Forget you. Just totally forget you there. Because this is how I deal with my mistakes. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me no more. So let me give you ten lies. Because I want to bring up your thinking. Amen. Amen. Lie number one. First lie, white people are the first people on earth. <laughs> Automatic lie. As long as Mendel's law is in effect, whites can never be the first humans. Listen, this is the law of biology that asserts white skin is recessive and black is dominant. What does that mean? You can't get black out of white because white don't have black in it. You got to get, but you can get, you can get, you can get black, you can get white out of black because black got every color in it. Just please, turn here, listen to this. You, that, that would make you powerful within itself to realize that. So you, so they came from you. Now that DNA is starting to prove it, they don't want to talk about DNA no more. Y'all remember it was DNA, 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 DNA. All this DNA going to show. Now that they start trading their DNA and all of a sudden their DNA start taking them back to Africa. All of a sudden now, no, something wrong. No, let's say they got up off that DNA. As long as that DNA said they came out of them caves of Europe, uh, these um, 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 Neanderthal people. When we know now that the Neanderthals, which was white men's ancestors, existed when black people had civilization in Egypt, while they was crawling in his caves on their knees, uh, beating their women over here with, with clubs, we had, we had a whole civilization built. How did it get flipped? How did we get where we are? They went over and conquered Egypt. They conquered Egypt. Babylon. They took the library of Alexandria, the books that blacks already had that mapped out the world, they already had astronomy, uh, mathematics and everything was already mapped out. They took it, took it back to their white culture and then rewrote the history and said blacks were, were a primitive civilization and they backed it up by keep going to using tribes. Even now when you think of Africa, you think of a tribe out in the bush. That was the way to erase. Why do you think they shot the nose off the Sphinx and erased, started trying to erase the hieroglyphs of Egypt? Now they just came right out and lied through Egyptology saying that, these, that the people who live in Egypt now were the people because, you know, they're more light-skinned. No, they were black people. So uh, this means white, that two whites cannot produce anything darker than themselves. That's Mendel's law. Oh, please, guess what I'm saying. This is why all those seeking the origin of human beings start and end in Africa. Now, why? Because if there are black people here and white people can't produce black, then we have to be the first people. So you had to come from us. Did y'all catch that? Recent genetic tests by researchers at the University of Chicago have proven that a major genetic alteration occurred exactly 6,600 years ago. Y'all got that? So that means something, something mutated, the, something on, in black people, something changed, it mutated. I thought it was albinoism. Albinos are, are white people. 
but we know they come from black people. So they're trying to just mess that up. This is why the Bible talks about that, 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 that the, the, the curse of Miriam, they called it leprosy, but it really wasn't scaly leprosy. The Bible says she turned Think about it. It wasn't white with sores and scales. Her skin turned white. That's why the Bible says don't let nobody come into the temple that has any spots on them. Now, how, and if, and if we all white, if, if, now, 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 if everybody's dark, spots would be white spots. They call you having white spots sick. You were sickly. You had a disease. Are y'all there? How can Moses live amongst the Egyptians? Being a Jew, a white Jew. Come on. How come Joseph's brothers didn't know who he was? They went to Egypt, saw Joseph, and didn't know who he was. Now, if he was a white man living amongst the blacks, wouldn't they have knew that was Joseph? The Bible says, the Bible even talks about they, they couldn't even distinguish Paul from the Egyptians. The Bible's about black folk. Think, let's just get your mind up. What, what does Adam's name mean? Red, earth. It was his color. He, earth. What did God take? This is real simple. What did he form you out of? How is he going to form you out of dirt and end up with white dirt? You are the color of the ground. You're the color of what you were formed out of. And when you go to Africa, where we know probably the Garden of Eden was, the earth is red. I can't, I'm telling you, it's a trip down how red the earth is in Africa. And that's why I call them Adam, red. Where we get the word edema, blood. Y'all there or not there? Oh, y'all, y'all done. Y'all done. That's why this, this has a lot to do with race, because it shaped the mindset. It made me think I was inferior. When my God told me I was fearfully and wonderfully made. It made me think for a lot. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm being honest. When I start understanding color, I start thinking it wasn't good to be black. I grew up thinking, man, why is it so hard? We, we live in the hood. Why, why, is, why is everything bad? Why is black bad? Everything's black is bad. I didn't want, we didn't want to identify with black. You might say you did, but that's why when you went to school, if you was around my age, you was wearing tree torns and K-Swiss, running around with your pants tight and tight at the bottom. Running around with preppy shirts on wire, you wasn't trying to be black. Because we were trained that that wasn't, being black was how had negative connotation. Oh, boy. If they would have taught us we were strong people, that we had strong DNA, my hair is curly not because it's bad. It's curly because it's strong. My skin is not black because I'm cursed. It's black because we were the originators of the earth. And let me let me help y'all. That's why I taught y'all. I ain't got time to show y'all, but I taught y'all that the map you're looking at is upside down. Yeah. Africa's really on top. What was the name of that map? I had it the other day. I, um, uh, yeah, Peter's Peter's uh, it's not Peter's Peter's map. I can't think of his whole name, but if you type in the original map, yeah. you will see that 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 Europeans drew the earth upside down so that Europe will be on top. That's how deep racism is. Now you think we don't talk about race. How deep is that? Now it only stands the reason that Africa had to be on top because they were, we were people of the sun. And as you get further and further away from the sun, you go down into darkness. We were up, in, if you turn Africa upside down, you realize all the, up, like uh, South America and, and, and Australia, these are all where the dark races originated from. Somewhere along the line, as you start seeing migration down into the cold areas, everything turns white. So that ought to tell you. If, wasn't a, if race wasn't a problem, why they turn the map upside down? They also made Africa on the map. Africa's bigger than what it looked like on the map. Africa is one of the big, is maybe the biggest continent. They purposely made it small. To get in your mind, Africa was small. Africa is a big continent. Oh, y'all want to talk about this. Oh, black people, please help yourself. Oh, I ain't got time to deal with this. The scientists say that the selected genes which affect skin color, hair texture, and bone structure were drastically affected during their time that they figured something happened in the DNA of blacks. 
the Neanderthal DNA is far more often found in Europeans and Asians than in Africans. See that? Y'all know? Y'all learned about the Neanderthal man? Was he not the first man? Did they not say you're the first man? But we don't have Neanderthal DNA. <laughs> DNA is something that if we came from the Neanderthal, we would have his DNA. We don't have it. But only, but but not only the blacks. Not only were they first. Not only were blacks first chronologically, but black were also the first builders of civilization. The Neanderthal, whose offspring yet wonders how and why the pyramids were built. Why do you think they keep going to Egypt? They can't figure it out. They emerged from cave life. You know, they go back and show y'all they paint a horse on the wall. They painting horses while they, we over drawing hieroglyphs. We drawing all kinds of stuff, making statues. They drawing, they drawing horses. They down in South America, them Mayan cats, boy, they, they got all kinds of, they still can't figure out some of the high level stuff that they were doing. Y'all there are not there. The Neanderthal, whose offspring yet, okay, uh, the white, now let me go on, I'm, I'm, let me give you a second lie. Second lie, blacks in slavery were only cotton pickers. I told y'all about that. It's a lie. Study, the way you find this out, if you start studying uh, slaves, the, the uh, selling, when they sold slaves, slave auctions. It's, it, it, it explains that white people were mechanics, I mean, black people were carpenters and nurses and blacksmiths, and that's why they were buying them for different prices. But these evil, these wicked movies only show you, they, they strip her down naked and sell her, she'll be a good maid. No, they was, they were, they were, these black people had more skill than that. They were buying them based on skill. Some of, most of them women were bought for concubines. That's how they kept slaves going. They actually breeded, white men would breed, they actually bought our black women to have sex with, to, for, for, they would actually breed black women to have more slaves. No, third lie, Lincoln freed the slaves. I told y'all that. It's a lie. Uh, 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 the Emancipation Proclamation lists a whole slew of places to be left precisely as if the proclamation never issued. That means if you actually read it instead of just going four score and seven years ago and all of those stuff that they throw up every year using him as the great emancipator, we never really read what he said. Let me quote what he said. He said, as the Negro is to the white man, so is the crocodile to the Negro. And the Negro may rightfully treat the crocodile as a beast or a reptile, so may the white man treat the Negro as a beast or a reptile. That's your Lincoln. That's your emancipator. Mighty funny that never comes out when they throw his name up. Black, this is another lie that you need to understand. This is how they treated us savagely. Black people, black people ate each other in Africa. You, when you first thought, one of the first movies you saw was that black Tarzan headhunter movie and they was, the black people cannibals. I know you got to remember, I remember being real little and black people had this big pot. And they put it, black people put you in a pot, and they got these bones in their nose, and they just dance around the pot. That's what they made you think. That's very important because by, by labeling black people as cannibals, they, they as, as gave them an easy way to, 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 to treat them the way they was treating them, like they said, the, the word savages. Listen to this. Let, let, listen, 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 listen. Oh, God, I got to hurry up. Uh, in the general history of Virginia, Captain, Captain John Smith wrote, that when famine struck, this new colony in Virginia in 1623, that the English settlers dug up a savage we slew and buried him. I mean, they, they, they slew and buried and ate him. That means the white people, when they came here, they were starving. They killed a savage, dug him up, and ate him. They, uh, they were, what, where, why, why can we know about that cannibalism? Another Captain Smith, another Captain, another, another rope, Captain Smith was bored and stewed with herbs. Another white Virginian did kill his wife, powdered her, and had eaten part of her. Many fed on corpses. These white Europeans, the early pioneers of, Amer of, of America, were feeding on Indians and each other. Why do you think the pilgrims, they were starving? They had to teach them how to eat her. Y'all don't go study it. I mean, like they was noble, came across on this boat, and they just found the Indians, and they learned how to No, they were starving. They was dying. They were so hungry, they start killing, eating their horses, and then they start eating each other. But we are the cannibals. Uh, we, they were feeding on the theme. Listen, the themes of cannibalism had made it into European fairy tales. Hansel and Gretel, Jack and the Beanstalk, Snow White. That's where they get that stuff. That's their fairy tales about their cannibalism. Why do you think the witch eating, won't eat the kids? Jack, the giant wants to eat, to eat people. 
That's their stuff. But we are the cannibals. Accusations of cannibalism were often used by whites as justification for subjugation or destruction of savages whose land or labor they wanted to steal. So now they go and say, oh, they, they, they're cannibals, and they feel like that gives them a right to go steal and take your land. Evidence of cannibalism is found in all places on earth, but the place where it is, more, it is most rare is in Africa. The place where it is most rare. Number five, blacks were cursed by God. I already told you about the curse of Ham. That's a lie. Number six, the United States government has helped blacks succeed. That's a lie. The, the Federal Bureau of Investigations took hundreds of known actions against black advancement organizations during the Civil Rights era, including the use of agent provocateurs, saboteurs, wiretapping, planning of false rumors and disinformation. The, S the FBI is also a prime suspect in the murders of key black leaders and activists. But this subversive government activity is part of a long history of U.S. government oppression of non-whites non that includes the sanctioning of slave trade and destruction of Indian nations. So, in, in other words, they... They, th what they're teaching us now, what they have taught the whites is that Afri blacks are better off, have been slaves, have come out of slavery in America. Like we were better off when we were brought here. That's what they're teaching us. Because we don't know Ghana has one of the top uh, economies now. Africa has one of the top economies going. Africa is going to be a first world country while all the western white countries are, are going into decline. Africa and other third world countries are coming up. But they make us think they're over in the bush. They're not in the trust me, they ain't in the bush. Billionaire, more black billionaires in Nigeria than anywhere in the world. Okay, um, so that's another. Let me go on. If you just study COINTELPRO, you will see how they undermine and they we know that they had something to do with hitting our hitting all our leaders, all our leaders dying, the Black Panther people that they killed off. See, they killed all them leaders off. This is what our government done. Amen. Killed our leaders off. So we and made us so afraid because we because if you become a leader, they shoot you in the head. That's how they do us. Number seven, seven lied. The Jews built the pyramids. Well, I already told you that's a lie. Look up uh, because I want I want I want I want to I want to uh, qualify what I said. There's there's a guy named Professor Slomo San, S H L O M O. He has he wrote a book, and he he is he had a book uh, telling you who the Jewish people in Israel are, how they got that land. Arthur Kessler is another Jew. These are Jewish people who to, told the truth about. Or who those people are in the land, how they got it, that they are Caucasian, they are not Hebrew whatsoever. The Bible says that they're not. The Bible says the true Hebrews don't have a land until Christ come. The true Hebrews don't have a land until Christ come. That's how the Hebrews, the Jews, go back into the land. The Bible says that the Jews will stomp down the Holy Land until the time of the Gentiles is over. The, 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 the people in the Holy Land are not Jews, they're Gentiles. They stomping it down. They got. They, in other words, they can run that holy land until Jesus come. Then the true Hebrews go gonna go back to the land. I ain't no Hebrew Israelite. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. <laughs> Study, you'll find out. Okay, so you can look that up for yourself. Slow mo saying number eight. Eight lie. Blacks sold other blacks into slavery. That's a great lie. They throw it up all the time to shut up, to shut you up when you start talking about slavery. One of the most unseemly manifestations of black self-hatred is often violently held belief that 500 years ago Africans sold other Africans in, into centuries of slavery. It is erroneously believed that after thousands of years of African life, blacks, blacks all of a sudden collapsed into an intersigned strife and started killing each other, selling their fellow kinsmen to foreigners for profit. The fact is that the Portuguese explorers, white folk, mastered a pattern of European conquest that is 6,000 years old. In other words, they, the Portuguese, they set out to conquer the world. They deliberately created mixed race subgroups with the intention of using them to capture and enslave native African populations. In other words, they actually went and breeded another race to go live amongst the Africans to begin to, to, to sabotage and begin to st sow strife among them so that they will begin to do that. Are y'all there? I don't have time to do too much more of this. God, just, just you, all, everything I'm saying, you can study it. It ain't, it ain't like it's here. And I told you there's more on the internet than pornography. Amen. Start studying. Start studying. Get your mind up. Stop all of that. That's just what's wrong with even with church. We come to church with this silly mind. We don't even expect to be taught in church. Amen. We come to church for only feeling. We don't come to church for no nothing that's going to like meat to the real. We don't come for that. You need to educate your children on what I'm saying. Yo, young black boys are dying in the street because they don't know they were somebody. We ain't telling our young men they were somebody. 
they think they was always no good deadbeat daddies. I guess they would be ready to kill themselves. I guess they would be going to prison. Maybe if you told them who they were, that we uh, told them the psychological game that was played upon them to make them feel like they was inferior when they really are superior. They are feared. The Bible even talks about the black in the Bible. They, he's the tall, fear, they call him the, 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 the tall, uh, fearful ones. That's what they call them, tall Ethiopians. Scared of them. Blacks were, man, blacks were, man, blacks were tough. We were warriors. Ninth lie. There was no slavery in the North. I already told you that was a lie. And uh, let me get you, can I get 16, number 10? Number 10, <laughs> the greatest lie Columbus discovered America. Amen. The greatest lie there ever was. You can't discover where, where people live. And let me get, before Christopher Columbus was commissioned to sell the ocean blue, he was selling the ocean black. That is, he was selling the coast of Africa in the slave trade. That's where he started selling from first. One person who talked to Christopher Columbus said that he sounded like a practice slave dealer. It is in Africa where he probably learned about the New World, because Africa already had the maps of the, of, of the, of the uh, uh, trading routes. Amen. Africa was already here. Amen. Africans had long traded uh, with the indigenous people of America. Columbus found himself found, Columbus himself found evidence during his voyages that he was not the first to discover anything. Columbus was told by the peoples of Espanola, <laughs> Haiti, of black men who had appeared on the island before him. They showed him the lances that they left there. The tips of the lances were of metal and alloy of gold that was prevalent in, Africa, in African Guinea. That's the country of Guinea. Columbus visited Trinidad where the sailors noticed the colorful, symmetrically patterned cotton handkerchiefs of the indigenous Indian cultures, which the native people call uh, Alamazar. They were much of the same color and style used in the wet head, head scarves and waistbands used in Africa or Guinea. The 17 Olmec, colossal heads, you know those big stone heads in Mexico are massive structures crafted for, from large basalt, basalt boulders. The heads date from at least 900 BC and are a distinctive feature of the Olmec uh, civilization. All portray men with wide African noses, full African lips, in apparent color of those, in, in, in apparent honor, honor, the statues were in honor of those who traveled and visited them. So the people of Mexico saw these black Africans and built statues out of and made statues that looked like them. Way before BC, BC, before there was a Catholic uh, Spain in Portugal, these people already had saw Africans. And when the Spanish showed up, they murdered everything in America and South America. They killed everybody and took that gold. And they keep trying to say, what happened to the Mayan? I know what happened to them. Y'all killed them. The Incas and all of them, y'all killed them. They killed them out. And what they didn't kill by the sword, they diseases killed the Indians. The diseases killed the Indians. They, the Indians were so healthy, used to live in the way they was living, they came out of sludgy England where they was dying of smallpox and, you know, all them diseases because they didn't understand hygiene and sanitation. They had open sewers in the middle of the streets over in Europe. They brought that stuff here. They rats got off the ship and stopped biting folk and people stopped catching their diseases. And that's how the Indians really died. In actuality, Columbus is a latecomer to the discovery game. His voyages were only notable for the total destruction he unleashed upon the indigenous people of Africa and America. What does race got to do? Now we racist. What does race have to do with it? I think it has a lot to do with it. I know that when, I know that when in Christ, we're, not, when, when we're neither race. But, 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 but we got to live in a world that does see race. And you must understand it so you can, why? Because if you don't know how to teach this to your children, then they'll grow up and only believe what the history books have lied to you about. And worse, your children in about 10 years are going to believe white people started hip-hop. Look at how they took hip-hop's white. You can't even, everything we, they, how do you think, if, if, if you go to a blues club, white people in there, they took jazz. They take what we do. And they turn around and make put their name on it. Now hip hop could be a white thing. 
your kids ain't gonna know that it started in New York in the Bronx. They don't know that. It's gonna be these cats, these these uh, these new uh, what's that guy made that gay song? Uh, uh, Mac Lamore. They gonna think he has something to do with it. And look at what they do when they take something over. It's the perverse, the perverting it, perverted. It. It's whack. <laughs> it's whack. It's just whack. It's just corny and it's whack. Why? Because it's them copying an original. I ain't for hip-hop anyway. I'm just telling you that. But I'm just saying, it's a mighty funny that in 10 years, you ain't going to know who, who, who invented it. Right now, the guy, that, the guy that made the movie about hip-hop, he's a Chinese dude. <laughs> so we don't even make the movies. Forget about Crush Groove and B Street. <laughs> you know, that, was a, that shows you who made it. We don't talk about them no more. Now let's go over and get Chinese filmmakers. Because if you don't listen, if you don't know where you've been, you can never know where you end up. And that's why we are suffering as a people.